Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tianjun Zhou from IAP, Chinese Academic Alliance. First, I should give my thanks to the organizing committee for the invitation. Today, I will talk about the decadal variability of the Asian summer monsoon. Here is the outline for my talk. First, I will show some observational evidence of the monsoon changes over East Asia and South Asia. After that, I will show some evidence regarding the connections among different monsoon domains. Finally, I will give a discussion on the potential mechanism behind all these phenomena, and finally uh, followed by an overview of the monsoon map for the coming CMAP-6. The first question, how about the changes of the East Asian summer monsoon during the 20th century? Here, please note, because the meridional coverage of East Asian monsoon is larger than other monsoon systems, so a stronger monsoon means we have more rainfall in the North China, but less rainfall in Central and South China. And here is the monsoon circulation index derived from the uh, reanalysis. There are many reanalyses, and the results are nearly the similar. You can find in the second half of the 20th century, the East Asian summer monsoon circulation has been weakening. This count of trend is significant. And following this count of weakened monsoon circulation, we have rainfall anomalies at this. You can find in the summertime, while there is a drying trend in the northern part of China, there is more rainfall in the southern part, especially along the Yangtze River Valley. If we check the monsoon rainfall anomalies at different decades, you can find this kind of decadal variability more clearly. You can find starting from the end of the 1970s, the monsoon rain band has moving southward, and thus we have drought in the northern part of China. This kind of interdecadal variability has a large social impact. One example here is the water, result, water vapor shortage. Here, for example, to solve the problem of water resources shortage in North China, the central government has carried out the so-called South to North Water Diversion Project. That means we transport water from here, from the Yangtze River, to the North China by channels. It cost billions of dollars. And starting from last year, about one third of the water used in Beijing actually come from here, Yangtze River. This is the decade of variability in the past 15 years occurred over the East Asian summer monsoon domain. How about the changes of the South Asian summer monsoon? Here, I show two figures. The first is the uh, monsoon area, monsoon rainfall intensity, and the total monsoon rainfall averaged over the land area of Indian monsoon. You can find in the past, uh, in the second half of the 20th century, there is also a decline trend, especially starting from the end of the 1970s. If we focus on this core area of the northern part of the Indian monsoon, you can find, as shown by the black line here, based on the CRU data set, the weakening trend is even more evident. So the South Asian monsoon also shows a weakening trend in the second half of the 20th century. Uh, we further extend the story of the South Asian monsoon to the past 100 years. And here is the Indian monsoon rainfall derived from different data set. One key point of this figure is that the weakening trend of South Asian monsoon in the recent decades is not a phenomenon that covered the whole 100 years. It's only interdecadal variabilities. So, based on all this evidence, we can see both the East Asian monsoon and the South Asian summer monsoon, or Indian summer monsoon, have shown interdecadal variabilities. Next point I want to note is that actually there are connections among regional monsoon changes. Here I show one example beginning from the connection between South Asia and East Asian monsoon. And here is the trend uh, of summer rainfall during the post-1950 period. You can find the drought in the northern part of India 
actually is consistent with that with North China. In the meantime, we have more reinforcement in the southern part of China. Please note here, this kind of phenomena is the interdecadal change of rainfall associated with summer monsoon circulation over the East Asian domain. Based on this figure, we can find that there are connections between East and the South Asian monsoon. We further extend our figure to the African monsoon system. Here is a figure from Martin Hurley. You can, here is the rainfall over the northern part, North African monsoon area, and here is the time series over the southern part. You can find in the second half of the 20th century, the North African monsoon has also shown a weakening trend. Here again, I show the East Asian summer monsoon circulation index here and the rainfall anomalies here. If we compare the East Asian summer monsoon index with that of the African monsoon rainfall, we can find a nearly similar weakening trend. This kind of comparison also indicates there are connections, maybe there are connections between the Indian, uh, African monsoon and the East Asian monsoon. We further extend our analysis to the all global monsoons domains. What I show here, this color is the monsoon area. Here is the monsoon rainfall intensity. And here is the monsoon rainfall amount. Uh, it's the trend for this period. Here is the trend of this three index average over the northern hemisphere monsoon area. You can find all the index shows a, show a weakening trend. We further compare this kind of index over the North Africa, South Africa, and the individual regional monsoon domains, you can find the weakening trend of the Northern Hemisphere monsoon system actually is dominated by that from North Africa, South Africa, and part of the North American monsoon system. This evidence further suggests that there are connections among different monsoon systems. So we extend our eye into the whole uh, global monsoon system. There are two ways of definition. The first definition is based on the precipitation defined by Bing Wang. And here is the definition done by Jianping Li based on the surface wind. You can find the two kinds of definitions actually games have given us nearly the similar story. The coverage of the global monsoon includes the Asian Australian monsoon system, the American monsoon, American monsoon system, and the uh, African monsoon system. So based on this domain, we can define a global monsoon precipitation index. That means if we add the rainfall that falls in the land monsoon domain, we can get an accumulated global monsoon precipitation index. The result is given here as shown by the bar. You can find for the second half of the 20th century, the global monsoon has been weakening. Here I also show the East Asian summer monsoon index. You can find the evolution of the East Asian summer monsoon is almost consistent with that of the global monsoon system. So for the East Asian people, we should say the story occurred over the East Asian domain has a much bigger picture is not a regional phenomenon. All this evidence suggests from East Asian, South Asian, and the Afri uh, African monsoon system, in the second half of the 20th century, they have shown interdecadal variabilities. So next question you might ask is, how about the mechanism behind all these kind of phenomena? Here, I first show the result with, uh, for the East Asian summer monsoon. What I show here first is the July East Asian summer monsoon index, and uh, is given as a bar. And also, I show the PDO index in the same time. You can find in the second half of the 20th century, the change of the monsoon index, monsoon circulation index, is just out of phase with the PDO index if we focus on decadal time scale. I further show the summer precipitation average over the northern part of China at the bar. Also show the PDO index here. You can find in the precipitation is also negatively correlated with the PDO index. These are based on the time series in the second half of the 20th century. If we extend the time period to the past about 100 years, we have result at this here is the PDSI index. 
average over northern China, and here again is the PDO index. You can find even in the past 100 years, we still can find this kind of out of phase, out of phase relationship between rainfall in northern part of China and the PDO index. So all this evidence suggests the long-term or decadal changes of the East Asian monsoon should be modulated or partly dominated by the phase changes of PDO. And here is a recent study given by Professor B. Wang from University of Hawaii. Here, he has defined a wind shear index for the Northern Hemisphere summer monsoon. Uh, he, the index is given by the dashed line. You can find, uh, he also showed the index of the uh, negative IPO AMO. You can find in the second half of the 20th century and the beginning of this century, the change of the Northern Hemisphere wind shear monsoon index is uh, significantly correlated with the minus IPO index and also the AMO index. Please note in his paper, he de uh, defined this kind of tropical zonal gradient or sea surface temperature at the mega N zone, but I believe actually it's still a measure of IPO in the tropical lobe. So based on this relationship, B1 suggests if we can predict PDO and the AMO at decadal time scale, then we can make a successful prediction of the global or northern hemisphere monsoon system. This idea actually can be examined by numerical models. Here I show one example is the AMAP time simulation. Uh, here is the list of the models we used. We have done two sets of simulation. The first is the GOGA, that means we use global SST to drive an AGCM. The second is GOGA, TOGA, that means we, un we only use the observed tropical SST to drive the AGCM and then check the response. How about the result? If we focus on the global monsoon, here we show the global land monsoon precipitation index. Uh, the green is a simulation. You can find the weakening trend in the observation is partly reproduced in the model world. Because in this kind of simulation, to the monsoon system, the only external forcing is sea surface temperature anomalies. So next question we should answer is, which part of SST anomalies can cause this kind of weakening trend? Here, I show the sea surface temperature anomalies congruent with the weakening trend of the global land monsoon precipitation. You can find in both the observation and the model world, the tropical lobe of the positive phase or IPO stand out. So it's due to the positive phase or IPO that the global land monsoon precipitation has been weakening in the second half of the 20th century. However, I should note that the scale of the model actually is very low over the Asian monsoon area. And here is a trend of summer precipitation uh, in the observation and in the simulation. You can find why the scales of the model are reasonable over the northern hemisphere and other uh, North Africa and other monsoon domains, the scale over the Asian monsoon area is very low. So for the East Asian summer monsoon, we should focus on the circulation change rather than precipitation. How about the circulation change? Here, I show the East Asian summer monsoon index derived from reanalysis and the two set of simulations. First, you can find Again, in the observation, the monsoon circulation has been weakening. Second, this kind of weakening trend can be well reproduced in the model world. And a third, if we compare the result of global SST driven or GOGA red with that of the tropical SST driven or TOGA red, you can find the response are nearly the same. This kind of similarity suggests is due to the tropical SST forcing that the East Asian summer monsoon circulation has been weakening. Uh, all this evidence suggests the observed weakening trend of Asian summer monsoon and our global monsoon are actually dominated by the phase change of PDO. PDO is regarded as an internal variability of the coupled ocean atmosphere system. So one may reset, think this kind of change is an internal mode. In the meantime, we should note external forcing 
may also have contributions. And here are two figures. For example, uh, in 2002, Manon published paper in Science. She highlighted that the emission of the black carbon may, okay, thank you, induce a drought in the uh, South Asian and the East Asian domain. In a recent paper, GFDR scientists have done numerical simulations by using GFDR model. And they su suggest if we specify aerosols to a coupled model, the observed drought in the northern part of India can be reproduced in the model world. How about the result over the East Asia domain? Here, I show the result based on the multi-model ensemble, CMAT5. Here is the trend of surface wind derived from reanalysis. You can find the southward wind anomalies. Please note for the mid state, it goes from south to the north. So this suggests a weakening of the summer monsoon circulation. And here is the result of the model world. You can find the weakening trend can be well reproduced except with a weaker magnitude. We further checked the response of the monsoon system to different kind of forcings. You can find the response in the all forcing actually is dominated by the aerosol forcing. For the greenhouse gases forcing, we can find a enhanced rather than weakened summer monsoon. For the contribution of natural forcing, that means the volcano forcing in the CMF5 simulation, the response is not significant. Uh, in a recent study, uh, uh, here is again Benoit's paper. He suggests suggest the recent cooling of the Eastern Pacific has favored a enhanced uh, global monsoon. Similar phenomena can be found in other data set. And here is the global monsoon index derived from different data set. You can find the monsoon has been recovering uh, in this period in recent decades. And we further examine the trend of this monsoon index over different domains. North Africa, Asian monsoon, North America, South Africa, Australia, and the South American monsoon. You can find positive trend nearly in all monsoon domains, except for the North African monsoon domain. The trend is weak, and also the reanalysis has weakness in this area. The last point I want to note that the recovering trend of the East Asian summer monsoon index actually lacks that of the northern hemisphere summer monsoons in about 10 years. You can find for the recurrent of East Asian summer monsoon index, it mainly occurred since the early of 1990s. All this evidence suggests both internal variability, such as PDO or IPO, and the external forcings can contribute to the changes of Asian monsoon. But one question we cannot answer is, how about the relative contributions? To answer this question, we have proposed a global monsoon map. Uh, global monsoon, the modeling intercomparison project named the GM map. It's one of the 17 maps endorsed by WGCM for CMAP6. One key objective of this map is try to answer the question, what are the relative contributions of internal processes such as IPO and AMO, and the external forcing that have driven the 20th century historical evolution of global monsoons. We have suggested three-tiered experiment. The tier one is an extended AMAP simulation but covers more than 100 years. The tier two is a pacemaker experiment. That means we use fully coupled model to do historical simulation, but we not observe the SST either at the IPO or the AMO domain. These are the major experiments. Uh, this kind of, uh, the tier two experiments need coordinations with DCCP C component. Chris is over there. We can have discussion for the coordination of the design for this. To make a summary, the weakening tendency of the South and the East Asian summer monsoon during the second half of the 20th century are local manifestations of global monsoon changes. Both the global monsoon changes and the Asian monsoon changes are dominated by the interdecadal phase change of PDO or IPO. CMA5 forcing suggests the iris of forcing would driven a weakened summer monsoon, while the emission of greenhouse gases favors a stronger monsoon circulation over East Asia. Finally, for the monsoon map for CMAP6, we hope to, uh, by this kind of international cooperation, to 
understand the internal processes and external forces in driving the past evolutions of global monsoon system. Thank you.